Turmeric contains bioactive compounds with powerful medicinal properties. Turmeric is the spice that gives curry its yellow color. These compounds are called curcuminoids, the most important of which is curcumin. However, the curcumin content of turmeric is not that high. It's around 3% by weight. Most of the studies on this herb are using turmeric extracts that contain mostly curcumin itself, with dosages usually exceeding 1 gram per day. Unfortunately, curcumin is poorly absorbed into the bloodstream. It helps to consume black pepper with it, which contains piperine, a natural substance that enhances the absorption of curcumin by 2000%. The best curcumin supplements contain piperine, substantially increasing their effectiveness. Curcumin is also fat-soluble, so it may be a good idea to take it with a fatty meal. Inflammation is incredibly important, it helps your body fight foreign invaders and also has a role in repairing damage, without inflammation, pathogens like bacteria could easily take over your body and kill you, although acute, short-term inflammation is beneficial, it can become a major problem when it becomes chronic and inappropriately attacks your body's own tissues. Turmeric dramatically increases the antioxidant capacity of the body oxidative damage is believed to be one of the mechanisms behind aging and many diseases, free radicals tend to react with important organic substances, such as fatty acids, proteins or DNA. Curcumin boosts brain-derived neurotrophic factor, linked to improved brain function and a lower risk of brain diseases, it may also improve memory and make you smarter, which seems logical given its effects on BDNF levels, however, controlled studies in people are needed to confirm this. If curcumin should lower your risk of heart disease that is the number one cause of death in the world, several studies suggest that curcumin leads to improvements in endothelial function, one study found that it's as effective as exercise while another shows that it works as well as the drug atorvastatin, in addition, curcumin reduces inflammation and oxidation as discussed above, which play a role in heart disease as well, the curcumin group had a 65% decreased risk of experience experiencing a heart attack in the hospital. Turmeric can help prevent and perhaps even treat cancer that is a terrible disease, characterized by uncontrolled cell growth. Multiple studies indicate that curcumin can reduce the growth of cancerous cells in the laboratory and inhibit the growth of tumors in test animals. In a 30 day study in 44 men with lesions in the colon that sometimes turn cancerous, 4 grams of curcumin per day reduced the number of lesions by 40%. Curcumin may be useful in preventing and treating Alzheimer's disease that is the most common neurodegenerative disease in the world and a leading cause of dementia. There may be good news on the horizon because curcumin has been shown to cross the blood-brain barrier. In addition, a key feature of Alzheimer's disease is a buildup of protein tangles called amyloid plaques. Studies show that curcumin can help clear these plaques. Arthritis patients respond very well to curcumin supplements. Arthritis is a common problem in Western countries. In a study in people with rheumatoid arthritis, curcumin was even more effective than an anti inflammatory drug.
Studies show that curcumin has incredible benefits about depression. In a controlled trial, 60 people with depression were randomized into three groups. One group took Prozac, another group 1 gram of curcumin, and the third group both Prozac and curcumin. After six weeks, curcumin had led to improvements that were similar to Prozac. The group that took both Prozac and curcumin fared best. There is also some evidence that curcumin can boost the brain neurotransmitters serotonin and dopamine. One, extraction. Two, concentrating. Three, defatting. Four, dissolving and precipitating. Five, collecting of curcumin. Safety first. Do not start taking any chemical treatment without protecting yourself. You must first protect your face and hands. Proper lab rats you will wear glasses and gloves. The environment you work should be well ventilated. Flammable and explosive chemicals must be stored away from heat sources and electrical sparks. Please do not apply this experiment that you will watch a little later without necessary laboratory equipment and chemistry knowledge. Always avoid harming yourself and your environment. We packed 125 grams of powdered turmeric root into a 150 milliliters sock slit extraction device. Then we put 500 milliliters of acetone in a 1000 milliliters glass balloon. Facing the cooler, we started the process by turning on the heater. We stopped the process, when acetone accumulated in the sock slit device became colorless, approximately 8 hours after the first flush movement started. After about 8 hours, when the process was over, we left the acetone extract remaining in the round bottom flask overnight. The extract, which is rested for 12 hours, is transferred from the coarse filter paper into another container. Distillation is done using a simple or vacuum system. This process continues until the acetone is completely evaporated and collected in the other container. As a result, a thick amber-colored liquid will remain at the bottom of the container. It is not possible to dry completely, at this point, stop the distillation process. Using magnetic stirrers during distillation will prevent splashes. To prevent mechanical loss, the inside of round bottom flask is washed with some acetone and the extract is poured into a 250 milliliters of flask. The extract taken into the beer glass still contains some acetone, because we had rinsed the round bottom flask with some acetone, by evaporating again, we completely eliminate traces of acetone. A magnetic fish is placed inside the flask and the heater turns on. At a very low temperature, acetone is completely evaporated. Finally, heating continues until a thick and viscous liquid remains. Meanwhile, excessive heat should not burn the extract. Please be careful. 
During this heating process, another 100 milliliters of flask is placed on the heater and 80 milliliters of hexane is added. When the hexane reaches the boiling point, it is removed from the heater. The mixing is continued by pouring hot hexane into the extract. In the meantime, a lump-shaped oleoresin will form at the bottom of the flask. The heater is turned off and stirring is continued for half an hour. Finally, the mouth of the flask is covered with stretch film and left to rest for 12 hours. After 12 hours, a very hard lump will form at the bottom of the container and the hexane will become more clear. Hexane is poured carefully and 80 ml of fresh hexane is added again. The next thing to do is to melt this hard lump at the bottom of the container with a glass stick and turn it into powder. This is a difficult process and will take some time. When the lump is completely broken, a magnetic fish is placed in the flask and mixed for 3 hours. As the process continues, the lump will completely crumble and become powder. Then the mixer is closed and the mouth of the flask is covered with stretch film and kept in the refrigerator for 24 hours. After 24 hours, we take out the solution that we kept in the refrigerator. As you see, the cleaned crude extract, was collected at the bottom of the container. We pour the hexane part, without disturbing the precipitate. By placing the container in a 40 degree oven, we completely evaporate the hexane, and dry the extract. 50 milliliters of ethyl acetate is placed in another flask at the same time and heated to boiling point. The oven dried extract is placed on the heater and mixed gradually, adding hot ethyl acetate. By adding the minimum amount of solvent, the crude extract is completely dissolved in hot ethyl acetate. When the crude extract is completely dissolved, the flask, taken from the heater, is left to cool until it reaches room temperature. Crude extract, completely dissolved in hot ethyl acetate, is allowed to cool at room temperature and then hexane is added dropwise. With the addition of each drop, the solution becomes cloudy, and the curcumin crystals begin to settle at the bottom of the container, this is because curcumin is dissolved in ethyl acetate but not in hexane, each drop makes the polarity of the solution more apolar. It is taken out in the fridge for 24 hours again, as you can see, the mixture of ethyl acetate and hexane on the top is cleaner and clearer. We pour this portion into another flask and keep the sediment in the 40 degree oven for a few hours, allowing the remaining solvent to completely evaporate. You can follow a few different ways in the collection of the oven dried curcumin. You can collect your product by scraping the bottom of the flask with a spatula. Or you can pour some hot ethyl acetate into the flask, melt the product again and pour it into a large glass baking tray. The glass tray is placed in the oven at 40 degrees to dry the extract again. Finally, dried curcumin is collected with the help of a scraper. 
Finally, we weigh obtained curcumin, as a result, we had 2.70 grams of curcumin from 125 grams of turmeric root, this means a yield of about 2% and this is normal if we consider the losses during crystallization and collection. 